South Africa's construction industry has faced a number of challenges, ranging from labor unrest, substantial delays on some of the country's major construction projects, as well as recent setbacks in the economy. Now, 2017 will see us host the fifth annual African Construction and Totally Concrete Expo, which is Africa's mega construction and infrastructure show with the, the biggest gathering of qualified buyers and sellers for the entire built environment value chain. Now, joining us for a conversation is South Africans Construction Industry and the Expo uh, is Chief Executive Officer at the Construction Sector Charter Council, Tabo Masomboga. You can be part of our conversation by giving us a call on 11 447 1742 or 11 Seven, of course, so two six two zero, or leave your comments on our Facebook and Twitter pages uh, this morning. It's one six two zero, rather four four seven uh, one six two zero. Now, as uh, we continue this morning, good morning to you, uh, Mr. Masumbuka. Thanks very much for joining us uh, this morning. Let's just first take a look at really uh, what drives the construction sector's success and performance in, in twenty seventeen. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much for hosting us and thank you much for the opportunity to engage on um, the outlook of the construction sector. The, the, the industry has performed quite, quite well relatively, speaking of course against the backdrop of the, the broader economic setback, mm. as you have seen. I mean, uh, National Treasury has predicted uh, over 2% of economic growth. Um, the, the, for, the, for the current financial year, it is hoped that the construction industry will immensely contribute um, in that improvement. Um, we, 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 we have seen a number of uh, incidences which uh, has actually uh, capitulated the industry into mm -hmm. what it is now, and the level of employment driver, at the level of uh, infrastructure projects, mm. the portfolio, um, at the level of broader opportunities. Um, they have been very limited quite frankly, but there are prospects. If you look at the government um, at uh, uh, a trillion rands infrastructure rollout that is supposed to take place over the next few years, there are prospects. <coughs> now, in terms of the work of what the, the sector does in, in, in driving the transformation agenda around that, making sure that you know the industry is stimulated enough to create those jobs so it can contribute extensively to, to the economy, what sort of things are, are you doing? The Construction Charter Council is primarily responsible for facilitating mm. that transformation and empowerment blu uh, blueprint mm. that will ensure that it does at least two things. It provides the big and established companies with an opportunity to commit their ex uh, transformation and empowerment spend, but it also facilitates the inclusion and the facilitation of the growth of your smaller um, contractors and build environmental professionals want to take opportunities in this industry and participate in its growth. So the, the, the Charter Council is in fact in the process of finalizing the, 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 the Gazette of the Draft Construction Sector Code, mm -hmm. which is uh, the ultimate blueprint for transformation and empowerment in the industry. Of the previous uh, activities and engagement, we've had our last meeting with the DTI sometime last year, I mean last week, to facilitate the finalization and the sign off. So that at least by May, April, May, we have the new em empowerment blueprint that okay. is going to be used in the industry. Now, the level of commitment uh, from the private sector, I'm sure there are big fives in, in the construction industry. And then if you are able to like gauge in the, in the recent years, democracy and all of that, the growth of the small construction companies, is there a, a place of like meeting of minds where we're seeing the, you know, the established companies willing to support the small companies and seeing the big small companies becoming, be becoming big companies? I must say it has been happening, but it's happening at a very insignificantly minimal scale. Um, if you look at the past few weeks, the, the Minister of Economic Development uh, and the seven uh, top construction companies announced what is called a, 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 a voluntary redistribution program, mm. rebuilding program, which is as a result of the, the collusion and cartels mm. which were committed by those top seven companies. And part of what those commitments and that agreement says is that over a period of time, seven years in this time, um, there has to be a deliberate commitment to upscale nominated a uh, number of construction companies that are part of the joint partnership with these top seven. So there has been 
that demonstration of commitment. However, it could have been more if you look at where the levels of black ownership is seated mm. in this industry. We've conducted a baseline report released in April 2014 that indicated that although there is compliance with the sector code, mm. that compliance could have been better if there were monitoring uh, an evaluation mechanism, which now the, the, the council has put into place. Some industry players, some companies have done something, but they have not done something significantly that warrants compliance mm. with those targets. So we have now increased and reviewed the targets that are now contained in the new uh, construction sector draft mm. that is going to be gazetted. And some of those targets really enhance the level of commitment by those industry players. So that the, the construction industry, what one is, it's it's a, it's capital in, intensive. Uh, at the same time, you know, in the in the, in the recent time, it's been looked as like a, I don't want to say a quick money making scheme, but a r making people rich, uh, you know, for all sorts of strange reasons. Right. Uh, you know, tenderpreneurs coming out of there, corruption, companies paying governmental departments uh, to have their tenders fast tracked but not delivering on the work, uh, cartels, uh, limit of really of healthy competition and actual growth that can be sustainable um, to sort of like speak to what the industry stands for. How do you manage that? Very capital company? intense and driven. You're mm -hmm. correct. There are those general perceptions that seems to think that if you want to make quick money, go into construction. In fact, it has attracted all sorts of and manner of professions and mm. individuals from various backgrounds mm. because of the perception that exists. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, you'll be surprised to know that it's actually one of the lowest profit margin industry. Um, I think on, 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 on average calculation over the past few years has been sitting on just less than 10%, 8.9. If you have made 8.9 net profit mm. in the industry, we have actually sat down relatively well. It actually depends on the amount of project portfolio mm. that you do have and you will you will realize that a lot of people who are at the entry market at the entry level find it difficult to have what is called project sustainability mm -hmm. which will then translate into relative profit and an ability to attract more skills and more employment a lot of the top uh, 20 companies have done relatively well albeit with the most difficult because they've been able to uh, wind out into the African continent mm -hmm. um, so that they don't necessarily focus in South Africa for their project portfolio and base. And it is the trajectory that we want to cascade throughout the value chain so that a whole lot of people f see the opportunities and participate in, the in, in this growth and inclusively. Well, we're also going to take your comments, of course, uh, from our Facebook page. And uh, Mark Haskins is standing by with uh, some of that uh, this morning as uh, we continue right on the show, Mark. Yes, indeed. The question we asked our viewers on Facebook said, do you think, the, think robotics and automation will take over the construction industry and eventually replace human workers? So some of the comments are as follows. Arthur Angry Birds saying, it's getting close to complete the mission of making the poor poorer. Technology is created by rich humans who will increase their wealth and retrench poor workers. Jim, when we're saying, yeah, well, uh, robotics straight away will replace human work. And then Harvey saying, obvious, they will replace a human, uh, a human as, a as the computer did. The job that was done by 10 people is now done by one person with a computer. And then Jimmy offers a different view. He says, now nah, those robotics won't replace humans. Uh, they need humans in order to be operated as uh, they always get stuck. Mm. And then finally, Shepard saying, yes, this will increase unemployment rate because these machines will only perhaps need one or two people to run it. So those are the general sentiments coming through on Facebook. How do you feel about that? Quite interesting, I must say. But unfortunately, construction industry, the entire value chain is not so easy to automate. Mm. You will have some certain levels that you will require some machinery, but there are some traditional, um, uh, 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 like brick laying. You'll, you'll certainly still require those particular, and a whole lot of thought process around the planning and design, which yeah, unfortunately can't be replaced. Um, so it's quite interesting Fortunately. To <laughs> Fortunately, <laughs> can't be replaced. Don't say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, it look at if you look at the construction sector, it's a it's one of the biggest uh, uh, employment generator. You know, uh, at, at at last financial year, it was sitting at just over a million. Mm. 
um, employ, uh, employment uh, rate, uh, uh, some of which contract and some of which full time. There are a whole lot of contract working mm. in the industry precisely because of the nature of the construction project, they're time based mm. and once completed, depending on whether the contractor has another work, mm. it can be able to absorb that level. But there's also challenges of local economic development. If you do work in Kimberley, um, there is an expectation that when you're there, you have to employ people from there and you can't from take the, the same people take them to Tabazimbi or take them to the Eastern Cape because there are local economic challenges that are faced there. So yeah, uh, it's very interesting. Interesting Just, indeed. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much for that. Great stuff. Thanks very much, Mark. Now talking about innovation and, and the labor in, in intensity of its uh, skills and challenges really around um, labor and employee employer exploitation. It's it's probably also one of the biggest challenges. How do you guys address that? You find that it's because of the lowest entry level, yeah. uh, people can be exploited within the industry. Extremely. What, in fact, we've observed, and I'm sorry, it is just a general trend that you can pick up when you go around the whole lot of road construction and the townhouses and the office blocks throughout Houtra. And you'll notice mm. that a whole lot of construction own company owners have got that tendency of going across the borders mm -hmm. to source what is called generally called cheap labor, mm -hmm. undocumented and unregistered, which present a huge problem. I've been on a number of sites which have collapsed either because of lack of workmanship and lack of quality controls and systems and standards. Mm. And we have picked up that mm. a whole lot of people who come into the country to participate because the people, uh, uh, construction owners are cutting uh, corners to make sure that they reduce uh, the cost of, uh, uh, of, of, of operating those, what you call. But we have also noticed uh, when we're doing the conducting, finalizing the construction sector charter that we are about to gazette, that the importance of ensuring that the skills in the industry is non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. Hence, when you look at the, uh, the compliance with skills element, of the construction scorecard that's gonna come. It's gonna happen across the board from mm. e exempted micro enterprises right up until the large ones because okay. everyone does recognize that without skills in the industry, it's like serving pizza without the base. All right, we're gonna have to leave it at that. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, my pleasure. Tab, of course, that was Chief Executive mm -hmm. Officer at the Construction Sector Charter Council, uh, Tabo Masumbuga. And if you wanna know more about, of course, that uh, uh, expo, it is happening on the 23rd and 24th of May. So you still have time uh, to plan so far you i will definitely uh, go online and find out more information about that do stay with us at the sunrise live